All right, everybody. Welcome back. This is the Real Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jake O'Connor. Real Conversations is a podcast for those dedicated to doing hard things and living a meaningful life. This belief is perhaps best encapsulated by a quote from the great Teddy Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, nor where the doer of deeds could have done them better. No, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. With that being said, welcome back to another episode of Real Conversations. Jordan, how you doing, man? Jacob, what's up, brother? One, love the uh, the intro there with the Teddy Roosevelt quote. It's one of our favorites, so that got me fired up. <laughs> oh, really? Small world. I uh, I found that quote a couple of weeks ago, and I just feel like it's such a true metaphor for the people that are actually out there killing it like you guys. Super inspiring to see. Yeah, I think, you know, with every every success story, there's a lot of failures, right, that go into it. Um, a lot of hard work, obviously. A lot of things that people don't see going on behind the scenes in that quote uh, does a great job of encapsulating sometimes how you feel when you're in that position. And uh, I know it's one of LeBron James's favorite quotes. He, he keeps it in his locker uh, as a reminder. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. So I appreciate you starting with that. Of course, man. So Jordan, quick background for people who don't know. Jordan's one of the three brothers, the founders of Super Coffee. Uh, but you guys have expanded far beyond just coffee into much more What's been going on? What What's new in your guys' world? We've been catching up once or twice a year for the last like three or four years now. Where are you guys at? Yeah, man. Well, we're doing a lot of fun new flavors, first time flavors for the coffee world, uh, which we've been getting a lot of good fan uh, feedback. We just launched the strawberry glazed donut flavor. We did like a cinnamon roll and a blueberry muffin. So um, expanding nationwide while while launching some, some fun stuff has been cool. And then recently we launched uh, an energy drink, a healthy energy drink called Super Energy. Um, and that product's absolutely on fire right now out of the gate. So it's fun to see just a healthier version of like a Celsius or a Red Bull um, to give consumers, again, what we call positive energy, where we remove any no negatives, uh, infuse it with positives that has prebiotics, collagen in it. Um, and then the product obviously still tastes great and gives a great boost from the natural caffeine sources. So when it comes to energy drinks, I personally don't drink a lot of them. I'm pretty... I try and be health minded. And so I like that you guys came out with the healthier alternative. What is different about your product and what is typically on the market in the energy drink section? Yeah. So there's zero sugar. Um, so the majority of the category is still loaded with sugar, but then the rest of the category that's zero, that's at, doesn't have sugar in it is using artificial sweeteners and artificial flavors for the most part. Um, and maybe even preservatives still. So that's the basically the bulk um, of all consumers can get in mainstream grocery stores is either high sugar or high artificial. Um, Super Energy takes out all of the, the negatives. So anything artificial takes out all the sugar, et cetera. We use natural sweeteners, natural flavors, um, still, again, 100% sugar-free. But then we also add collagen, uh, which is pr a protein that's good for skin, muscle, hair, et cetera, um, just longevity in general. Um, prebiotics, which is good for gut health, um, and then a variety of B and C and D vitamins. Um, they're also great for for energy and general well being. So um, it's almost the complete opposite of what you're seeing out there. But again, the products still taste phenomenal. We have a mixed berry burst flavor, strawberry lemonade flavor uh, right now, and then a mango peach flavor um, that are great. We'll have some more flavors coming in the future, but so far those three have been have been crushing it for us. Oh, that is super exciting. When you look back that you starting this in your dorm room in 2016. And now you can say, you know, you've got over a hundred investors, A-Rod, J-Lo, you've removed 10,000, I'm sorry, 10 million pounds of sugar from the American diet. And mm -hmm. you're in over 70,000 locations. What comes to mind? Like, what do you think of when you hear those crazy stat lines that you've all done in the last seven years? Yeah, I think what, what, what I think about naturally is just all the hard work, right? That we put in and all the failures and the, the lessons that we learned along the way. Um, it's been a, it's been a long journey. I was 18 years old, um, just starting my freshman year, literally a month into my freshman year. Um, when I started working on super coffee and the, the, the work that we put in the amount of hours and the, the people who we've met along the way, our teams, our advisors, mentors, just friends in, in the industry. It's truly been a, a lifelong opportunity that, um, you know, we've kind of compacted down into this eight year, you know, eight to nine year time span. So it's been a lot. Um, at times definitely overwhelming, but I think we're in a really great spot right now. We're still obviously growing a lot. We still have a lot of room to grow ahead of us. Um, so we're just grateful, man. We're really grateful to be where we are. Luck definitely has played a role. You know, some things have bounced our way. Some things don't always bounce our way and you try to make the most of it and learn from it. 
Um, but the amount of work, the time, the attention, um, the passion and the care that's gone into this brand and business over the past eight years is, is really second to, to none. And it's remarkable. And it's not just from, from me and my brothers, it's from, you know, our leadership, leadership team, our executive team and every single employee or, or investor who's been on this journey with us. So it takes a, an army, man, not a village. It takes an army, especially in food and beverage when you're starting from scratch with very little resources. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that, that we're just grateful to, uh, to be able to, to be where we are right now. Well, and that is a super hard industry to be in. It, like it takes a lot of connections, capital, product refinement. When you go back to that, like early stages, you're in your dorm room starting this. At what point did you know, okay, I'm dropping out and I'm going to spend, I'm going to go full time on this. My brother's going to join me. What was kind of that inflection point of this could really be it. And I need to take that chance. Yeah, it was that first summer, actually. Um, I had been working on it my entire freshman year and playing basketball. I was on scholarship. But that first summer, I uh, I moved in with Jake. He was at Georgetown in D.C. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was getting ready for his senior season. And we just launched a minimum viable product down there. Uh, we found a small little uh, manufacturing partner, got some suppliers on board, and, and ultimately uh, went into Whole Foods, uh, Washington, D.C., and sold our first bottle. And from that point on, we realized, okay, this is going to take a lot of work. It takes a lot to get one bottle on the shelf. Took a ton of time, energy, and effort. Now we need to figure out how to do that every single day, forever, and, and grow and grow our volume and, and make it a real business. So when we faced that reality, we realized, one, we needed to raise some capital. So we, we had our aunts were two of our first investors and then some friends and family beyond that. Um, and then I realized, look, there's no way I can go back to school for my sophomore year. I had too much responsibility and, and a lot of traction, you know, at that point in time after just one summer of working on it but just realized how much care and, and energy it was going to take. So I wanted to be 100% focused um, and the product was resonating. Um, so I had good reason to believe in it, even though it seemed crazy at the time to, to everyone except myself. Um, so that, that fall, instead of going back up to Philadelphia university to, to play basketball, I decided to stay in Washington, DC and live on Jake's couch and uh, focus on the business. That is just crazy. And you're right to everyone else at the time. It probably did look crazy. I mean, what was your level of nervousness and anticipation? And I mean, was it eating at you? Like, what if this doesn't work out? Or were you always just like bullheaded? This is going to work. I'll make it work. Yeah, I was, I was stubborn, very bullheaded <laughs> down, you know, just, I'm going to make this work no matter what. I never really thought about, you know, what if it doesn't work? Um, it just wasn't in my in my thought process at all. And I think that was a huge part of our success early on. And, and you know, in some cases still, still might be. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think that every entrepreneur and, and look in my, in my mind, I knew like, if I stopped to think about it, I could, I could have always went back to school. I was a freshman um, at the time. And uh, most brands fail within their first, you know, first year really. And then their second year. And then if you make it through the first two years, your odds start to get a little bit better. Um, so I figured, look, if, if it fails, it's going to fail in year one when the odds are really against us, when Jake's in, still in school and I'm doing this by myself, et cetera. And then look, I can go back to school next year. So that was my thought process. My mom liked that thought process so she could call it a gap year, uh, for, to her friends, um, and, and the rest of the family, Jordan's taking a gap year <laughs> um, and, uh, it made a lot of sense. So, um, but no, dude, you gotta be just laser focused. I mean, like this word focus gets thrown around a lot, but what does it really mean? And every single thought, um, every action, everything that you do should be put into making the brand successful. If you really want to be successful, um, there was a great video clip that came out when I was in high school, actually. Um, it, how bad do you want it? Uh, it was, it was, uh, E.T. Eric Thomas was, uh, was the moderator for it. It went viral, man. I mean, like millions of views on YouTube when I was in high school. So like 2013. And the whole idea was like, how bad do you want to be successful? You won't be successful until you want to be uh, successful so bad uh, that just as, just as much as you want to breathe, basically. Like you can't be successful until you want to be successful as much as you want to breathe. And that's what it's like when you're starting up, starting a business. I mean, every ounce of you has to has to really go into it if you want to be a big success. If you want to run a mom and pop shop business or your small side hustle, that's fine too. But just know that you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to hit a home run by doing that. Um, so I wanted to hit a home run. I wanted to build a, a billion dollar brand. And I knew in order to do that, I had to give every ounce of me. And here we are eight years later, and I'm still giving every ounce of me into the business. That is incredible. It, it really goes to show the power of compound interest. I mean, the guy who puts in just an extra five minutes every day, that adds mm -hmm. up exponentially over time. 
And you're doing well over that. If every ounce of you is focused on it, I mean, you look at Steve Jobs, you look at um, Ferrari, you look at Rolls Royce, all of them had that pristine focus on this is what I'm going to do. And that is the only thing I'm going to focus on. Talk about the company that you found along the way on this journey. You're surrounded by some incredible people now. There's a bunch of people that you get to spend every day with that are on a similar mission that you are. And I feel like that just elevates the standard and the excellence of the brand and yourself as a person too. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And you mentioned a couple of great entrepreneurs, but there's that those stories go on and on. I mean, Bill Gates is famous for saying he didn't take a day off in his 20s. Um, and a lot of people hear that and say, oh, he's a workaholic. And, you know, maybe that's one way to look at it from a negative from a negative viewpoint. But he was just so focused and he was passionate and he loved it. And he built one of the most successful companies of all time. Elon Musk is the same way. You know, he's a little bit more on the neurotic side, but that's all right. Um, his level of uh, of intensity and focus into being successful is what makes him successful, right? Um, sure, he's smart and talented, et cetera, but he's putting in the time and, and it's showing up. And then for us, I think Jimmy, Jake, and I all shared that same level of passion, determination, ambition, um, which worked really well. Like you're the founder group, who you decide to start the business with is critical. You have to have that same level of, of uh, intensity because um, then you're going to raise the bar and that's going to set the tone and the culture for the rest of the company. But we wanted to match our, our ambition and, and uh, intensity with, com with compassion and humility. And those are some of our core values at Super Coffee. So we didn't just want to be you know, three brothers, all division, you know, full scholarship athletes, you know, just running hard with our friends, you know, and, and creating this, this kind of bro type culture that became toxic. We wanted it to be very inclusive. Um, we wanted it to be fun. We wanted it to be compassionate. We wanted to help people. And that was really our mission at Super Coffee from day one is to mass produce positive energy. Um, and, and there's a lot that goes into that beyond just selling bottles of coffee. So we infuse those things into the, into the culture and we live them every single day and we're not perfect. Obviously we make a ton of mistakes. That's a part of everybody's journey. I think a lot of people fear of failure is so overwhelming that they decide not even to start or it holds them back. You got to overcome that. Um, Cause you're going to fail no matter what. And no matter what you do, it's going to be hard, whether you work on wall street or you're a doctor or a lawyer, or, or you start your own company, it's going to be hard work. Um, so you got to choose your hard um, and you got to give, give it everything you got and set the tone for your, for your team. I think that's the most important thing as a founder. I love that. It, is it surreal to you <clears throat> again, to look back at this, you started this with your brothers and now you guys have well over hundred employees, I believe last time I checked at least to be in a position where you're managing people, you're trying to cultivate this culture and pass it down and the company keeps expanding. It, is that position wild for you that you have other people looking to you for direction and this is your baby and you're continuing to grow it? Yes and no. I think I think when you when you zoom out and just pause and reflect, yes, of course, you know, um, it's cool. Uh, but I think we never take it for granted, and um, we take it really seriously. And we we think of leadership and management as this idea of servant leadership, um, which is really putting the mission and putting our people first, uh, flipping the org chart upside down, and and serving and setting our people up for success. And I think when you think about it through that lens. Um, you know, it's a lot different. It becomes about the people and it becomes about um, their goals and and not just not just for work, right? Not just to produce more more outcomes, better outcomes, but also personally too, setting them up for their careers um, and making sure they're they're comfortable with their family lives. Like there's a lot that goes into that. Um, so thinking about it through that lens of servant leadership has helped us develop a lot, um, not just as, as individuals, but as leaders. Um, and I think it's helped the company well as well because there's, there's, you know, it's tried and true. I mean, we learned that that was passed down to us from, from our advisors and mentors. Um, you know, there's obviously great management principles and practices that you need to learn and you got to be able to do the basics and, and the fundamentals well. Um, but as you start to grow and you become more of a leader in the organization, it's really about taking care of your people and making sure that they're set up for success. Absolutely. And I think you guys do a great job with the culture too. You have an environment that looks fun, at least from an outsider's perspective. I see the pickleball court. I see you guys playing basketball, the fun product shoots, but you also know at the end of the day, it's, it's a counterbalance. You're getting down to it. You're doing the hard work, what's required, but then you can also have that release and create this culture where it's your release is you guys having fun together and interacting together. Yeah. Look, we want to have uh, an environment where people are comfortable. Um, you know, we, we, we do have a strong culture and, uh, but it's not always just about winning heads down, right? You gotta be able to provide people with small things like that, whether it be perks, um, 
you know, I'd say those things are more like perks that just again allow people to unplug and just take a break when you're at work. Like just relax. Feel like people want to come to the office. Obviously, a lot of people are working from home now. They have to want to come to the office. It's got to be a fun place. It's got to be a good work environment. Um, there's got to be good people in the office, right? So you have to create that culture and that environment for people to come in and thrive and have a good time and enjoy their lives, man, right? Like we're, we're, we hire people who are great at the job, but we're also great people who just enjoy being around other great people. Um, and again, like I think some of those things that you mentioned are, are cool little things. Obviously, like, you know, there's big tech companies known for that. But then sometimes that becomes like, I don't know, oh, you know, come work for us because we have X, Y, Z, blah, 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 and all these perks. And, and that's not what it's about at all. It's not it's not a bribe, right? We're not bribing people to come work for Super Coffee because it's fun. So that's just our culture. It's a part of who we are. It's the team team mentality. Um, and again, people, I think, it, I think it makes people want to come, come into work if they're here um, and they just have a better time. Um, when they do it and then ultimately it leads to them being happier and more productive when they get back to their to their desk definitely jordan i've noticed lately too you've gotten into running it seems like quite a bit being a former basketball player what's well, been the progression for you getting into running because you're running at super fast cliffs i think i saw a couple even sub six minute miles uh for like a half marathon a marathon <laughs> what is what has that been like um you know love hate relationship <laughs> i think that uh i think that i'm again very competitive um i always just love fitness in general um and pushing myself out i kind of want to be the best version of myself and um you know we started getting into running a couple of years ago and then you know how it really started last year um one of my best friends actually got diagnosed with testicular cancer and uh, stage three, and, you know, it was a scary, scary moment for us. Um, so the first race that we actually signed up for that I signed up for last year was um, a 10 miler in Philadelphia, which is where I went to school, uh, where I met um, this kid. And um, it was, it was, you know, cancer awareness, we were raising money for, for cancer. And obviously, it was for him. So we had a big, a big team run. And, you know, I, I, again just being competitive and being passionate and caring about my friend and i lost my grandmother to cancer so it hit home to me i wanted to go out there and run my best race i wanted to go out there and wait um and do it for him right like i'm not just showing up to run and you know it's not not what i'm about um so i trained for it i got you know and, and again i was already in good shape but i got into running shape and i went out there and i put up a pretty pretty good time i surprised myself and i was like wow this is great like i just love the whole preparation that went into it mentally physically the night before i kind of had like jitters it was almost like i was back in college getting ready for a basketball <laughs> game the morning of you know your your nutrition's right you feel dialed in like you just felt i felt really good like it, again it was something that i missed since college it's a different type of competition right when you're everything's leading up to, to the game day um so i started doing more races and then obviously um uh you know, when you get into the habit of it, yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get better at it and better at it. So, uh, yeah, it's been something that's become a part of my lifestyle and my part, my brother's lifestyle. We started a super coffee run club, mm -hmm. uh, just because I realized I was going to all these races and I was like, there's no coffee. There's no anything actually. It's like, what are people are eating like goose and, and, you know, taking caffeine pills, like it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, so coffee and running go great together. And, uh, I drink a super coffee before I go for every run and it's, uh, it's been fun, man. Yeah, it, I'm a former basketball player myself, at least in high school. I did the AAU thing, and, and nice. I, I never found a release like that, at least the last three years here in college. And recently, in the last couple months, I've gotten into ultra running. Nice. And that is like just a, another way to push yourself. I think it might be a little bit similar to the release that you feel of basketball Like takes so much competitive energy, and it's mm -hmm. really hard to replace that. But when you're out there and you see other people and it's like, okay, I'm going to pass up this person. I'm going to pass up this person. Or if you're by yourself, you can race against the clock. I, I think it's reignite that reignited that competitive side of myself a little bit. And I think I see that in you too. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. You nailed it. I mean, it definitely is like uh, competition is within my nature. It's what you know, it's within that within everybody's nature, but really, really a part of my childhood. Um, basketball was obviously a huge part of my life. And uh I missed competing. I didn't realize how much I missed it though until I started racing. Um, and you're right, you get on the start line and the gun goes off or you're, you're doing a long run and, you know, you see some folks out there and you do, you do want to pass them and you get a nice little, uh, adrenaline boost and dopamine boost. And that just feels good. Um, and, and there is a release that comes with it, but then obviously you're doing something good for your body too. 
Um, and then you look better and you feel better, right? So there's long-term benefits too. Now you do obviously have to be careful with running. I mean, I think you don't want to, to kill your body, um, right? Because it becomes counterproductive if you get over into it. But uh, there's a good balance there right now for me um, where I'm not pushing it too hard, but I'm able to get kind of what I want out of it. Um, it keeps me in shape. And then I'm, again, just have a good good routine and work, work run balance is what I like to say now because it does take take up some time too. Yeah. Do you include weight training whenever you run as well? Yeah, I'm big into weight training. Um, I still prioritize weight training actually over running unless I'm training for like a marathon or something like that. And I got to cut down. Um, but uh, if I run too much, I get a little bit too light, too skinny. And uh, I don't like that. So I try to, I try to weight train six days a week and I'll run about six days a week as well. Um, and then that seventh day, I kind of leave open for however I'm feeling. It could be an off day, could be a stretch day, could be you know, maybe I just go in and, and, you know, do some light cardio or light, light weights, but usually I'm, I'm working out, you know, six or seven days a week. I feel like we're starting to see like the emergence of like the hybrid athlete, someone who lifts and runs. I feel like for a long time, the runners were missing out in the lifting and vice versa. And I feel like the oh. balance of those two things together is actually leading to better athletes. And I think it's been really cool to see. No, I agree too. And we're seeing it with the corporate, the corporate athlete too. I love this, this trend that's going on right now where, executives and and people in business are taking more care of their bodies um it used to be hey i need to work 12 hours a day seven days a week right and sometimes more than that 15 hours a day at the expense of my health um and now people realize like even brian cornell the ceo of target is on podcast talking about how he's up early getting his workout in. he refers to himself as a corporate athlete and it's so funny he, he's like yeah I, uh, you know i'm i feel like i'm one of the first people doing this and it's like <laughs> well, you're not but you might be one of the first fortune 500 or fortune 100 ceos doing it right so like it's great that you see it at that level but really i think it's starting more in, at the at the entrepreneurial level because the grind is so hard that entrepreneurs needed an outlet and they realized okay meditating right became really popular good for your mental health but working out is great for your mental health. It, it helps you more at work. You feel better, more dopamine, more adrenaline, et cetera. You'll last longer um, and ultimately just do better work. Um, and, and over time, the course of your career, you'll be able to work longer into your 60s, 70s, 80s um, instead of having to retire in, in your it, 60s. The general health of your body increases, as does your energy. But also, you could sit at a computer for three hours and try and figure out whatever fire you're putting out. Or you go on a run and you get that mental clarity in the background, you're subconsciously working out that problem. Dopamine increases, serotonin increases, you feel better and you're solving problems. To me, it's the win-win combination that's been missing for a long time, but it's finally starting to come about. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm still, I mean, I admit I'm far from perfect with my routine. I'm still trying, but right now I, uh, I think the, you know, the, the other thing I've incorporated is just obviously the biggest trend in, in health and wellness right now, cold plunges. Yeah. Um, but first thing I do every morning, I'll wake up around five, five fifteen. First thing I do is straight to cold shower. Um, cold shower and your your body just reacts so well, your brain turns on immediately. Um, so I hit that and then I get to get into the gym for you know an hour, hour and a half before I get into the office. And then if I have time in the afternoon, evening, I'll do it at the second workout um or just a meditation. But I do think there there has to be more of a balance. Um, for me, at least on, on meditating, because I think the, the pros and long-term effects short and long-term effects of, of, of meditation are, are, you know, just as close to working out. Um, so I gotta, I gotta improve on, on that aspect. Did you get in the cold shower when you first wake up? It's one of the most brutal things. It's brutal. It sucks. You think that it gets easier and you get used to it, but you don't get used to it. Um, but that's part of it, right? Cause if you get used to it, then it starts to lose its effectiveness. I think you just gotta, you know, Go in there, maybe maybe flex a little bit, maybe scream, and uh, you feel amazing afterwards. You get an adrenaline rush and a dopamine rush. And Andrew Huberman has been doing a lot of, of research on this. Joe Rogan has been talking about it a lot. So hopefully people will have listened to this point in the podcast and can try it out. Because this is like, I swear to God, dude, probably the most simple, easiest thing that anybody can do. Anybody can get into a cold shower. You do not need a cold plunge at your house. You can do cold shower and it will make a, a lasting impact immediate impact you know you get that adrenaline dopamine but it's also good for your hair it's good for your skin it's good for your brain you do that every day you talk about compounding effects um i think we're going to see some really cool stuff in 30 40 50 years from now with people people who started doing it now it, it's crazy and if you want to go a step further in the cold shower um as i started running a buddy and i we got a hundred hundred gallon livestock trough so just one of those big buckets filled mm -hmm. with water during the winter it freezes over 
we've got college kids out here on a Friday night instead of going out, we're in the cold tub at 10 PM. Like it's yeah. one of those things that's becoming a, a way to connect with people. It, it's a, it's a great time because when you're yeah. in there, you're, you're so like, you're so vulnerable and you're kind of freaking out and then you calm down and the conversations that you have and the, the yeah. ideas and the connectivity, it's so much better. Yeah, dude, we've seen that firsthand too. One of our, our great friends and mentors is Jesse Itzler, mm -hmm. um, very successful entrepreneur. Um, and he does these types of events. He, he's been doing them for a while. Now he's sort of starting to, to create company and, and system and process around some of it because it's become so popular. It's almost like you have to start to organize it in a way that can be more impactful but it just started him doing saunas and cold plunges, like just by, you know, with small friend group. I mean, he's so social and uh, fun and cool to hang out with. But to your point, it's like a cool thing to do on a, on a Friday night. Like you wind down from the week. Like I was saying last night, Friday night, I mean, some, some of these weeks, man, when you're up at 5 a.m. and you work and you're still working long hours and putting in, putting in hard work and you're pushing your body, you're pushing your brain. By Friday night, I'm like ready to sleep 15 hours, right? So like that is is huge for me. Obviously, our jobs require us to be out and about too. So we're networking and going to events and concerts and and things with with partners. But you got to build in rest time, rest and recovery time, and and sauna, cold plunge, etc. is a great way to do that. And to do it with friends and get that social aspect of it is also an amazing way to just unplug and enjoy life, dude. Right? Like you don't need to drink alcohol and smoke weed to have a good time. Um, you do that, you, you jump in a cold plunge, you're going to feel more high than you've ever felt in your entire life. So I promise any kid listening to this right now, jump in a cold, cold, uh, frozen, uh, lake or river or whatever you got, you'll feel so much better afterward that you, uh, you'll do it again. It will turn the toughest man into just a complete child. <laughs> and it is awesome to see. It is incredible. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So Jordan, I'm sure this is not forefront, any sort of priority, but you guys are down in Austin. When is Super Coffee going to go on the Joe Rogan podcast? Because I keep looking for the episode. Look, it's funny, man. Joe, uh, we obviously love Joe. He's great. We, um, you know, we tried years ago. He reached out. It was funny, man. Joe, Joe, had, I don't know how it happened. I think he followed Super Coffee on Instagram randomly. And we had reached out, DM'd him. Like, this was probably 2017, maybe 2018. Um Nothing ever really came out of it. We were obviously too small for us to go on the podcast at that time. It makes sense. Still might not make sense. But um, he could have invested and made a shit ton of money. Not that he, he ended up doing just fine. But this was really before the podcast became what it became for him. Um, we'd love to go on and just tell the story, man. Like, I think the reason for us to go on is not just to say we went on Joe Rogan or, or get our, our brand name out there. It's really just hopefully to inspire and motivate people. Like, that's all we want to do. Jimmy, Jake, and I, we talk about that a, a lot. Like if, if our story can inspire and motivate the next generation or even, you know, people older than us too, which we get that feedback a lot, then hell, let's do it. Because we're not, we're not, you know, geniuses. We're, we're, you know, we didn't go, we didn't come from money. We didn't go to Ivy League schools. We didn't even go to like high major D1 schools to play sports, um, you know? And I think it, it just goes to show like what you can accomplish when you focus and put in the work and focus on continuously, continuously getting better um and learning and being open-minded and i think joe joe uh stands for a lot of that and he's got obviously the most prominent people in the world on the podcast so we don't belong on that stage but it would be cool if our story could uh could help inspire the, the millions of people that he reaches absolutely he'd have an incredible platform to do that but i also want to take a second and just appreciate that you guys really do just care about spreading the message because when i started this podcast back in like 2018 2019 you guys were some of my first guests and i had no one listening. And now the amount of people in my circle that buy super coffee, know super coffee and, <laughs> and love you guys. It, it's been really cool to see. And I appreciate you guys always giving me the time of day for that. Yeah, dude, of course. Now I know. And uh, we love coming on. Sorry, this one took a little bit longer to, to book just because we've been traveling and whatnot. But um, no, man, what you're doing is awesome. And we'll, again, that's just the, the goal for us is to inspire um, and help people wherever we can, whether it be people who are in food and beverage starting brands or they just want to get better physically, mentally, or, or at their jobs, right? I mean, like uh, the mindset applies to, to you know, a lot of different disciplines, almost all disciplines in life. And I think it's just this idea of being focused, um, putting in the work, um, being humble, um, and just focus on the long term as well. And over time, you know, you'll continuously get better. So uh, appreciate you giving us the platform here. Um, and hopefully, again, your listeners get some value out of it. Definitely. Jordan, as we start to wrap up here, a um, couple quick things. Where can they find you online if they want to buy super coffee? I think you guys are working with Costco right now. If you want to shout that out to anything yeah. that's viable for you guys. 
Yeah, uh, at drinksupercoffee.com um, and then just drink super coffee on Instagram um, are great places because you can buy super coffee online. I, I would recommend just Amazon. You can get it the next day. Um, and then obviously any, really any grocery store in the country right now, um, you mentioned it, but over 70,000 accounts. We're only in Costco in like the Texas area, but hopefully coming to more regions soon. But outside of Costco, it's basically every other grocery store in the country. So Walmart, Kroger, et cetera, Target. Um, but uh, yeah, and then if you want to follow or, or connect with with any of us, um, me or my brothers, you can buy, find us on Instagram, Jordan uh, underscore DeSico. Feel free to DM, reach out. Um, always happy to connect with people if they have questions coming, coming out of the episode. Uh, or just curious if they're doing like I still have like I had a call tomorrow actually with a a student um and we still have students reaching out all the time like hey I'm doing a class project on super coffee or I'm doing a class project on food and beverage would love to pick your brain and we'll reach out on LinkedIn so like feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn or, or find my email whatever's easiest um we'll usually try to respond within you know 24 48 hours and try to get something planned so um we are trying to be as accessible as possible and we'll, we'll be open and honest with with whoever reaches out Awesome. I'll put the links for those in the description. As always, if you guys got any sort of value out of this, if you enjoyed it, if you could share the link with whoever you think might also enjoy this, helps us grow. Jordan, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate it, man. And uh, hope you have a good weekend. Keep crushing it. Keep hitting the cold plunges on Friday nights. And uh, we'll send you guys some super coffee for your next Friday night uh, cold plunge session. <laughs> I appreciate that.